Star. Uh, this videotape, we, as you may know, new, the corporation which owns this company owns another company that does a similar thing in Great Britain. And they got some video from someone on the ground. I don't have any way of knowing who. But clearly the camera was panning from one side of the street to the other. And we saw one explosion on one side that almost well, appeared to be coming from the building. And another explosion on the other side uh, within a matter of seconds there. I'm pretty sure if we're covered on fair use here. Uh, there are laws that regulate and rules that regulate what video we can use and what video we can if it's not from us. Uh, and that's something that lawyers have to be in the middle of. But I think we have the key to all of this here in that video that we were just showing. Uh, and I, I've had about enough of this still picture. Uh, we, we now know an explosion happened on one side of the street and then on another, Jonathan. And that's as definitive, definitive as anything I've seen. Uh, it certainly is. And when you look at that, Shep, uh, it makes sense of something the Boston Globe is just reporting, and I'm quoting here from the Boston Globe, multiple people transported for medical treatment, blood stained the sidewalks of Boylston Street. Um, and if, and it remains an if at the moment, but if those were explosive devices planted, it appears that they were timed to go off within seconds of each other. Uh, it's, a, it's a big if at the moment, but those two explosions appearing, the, what we've just seen from Sky News, one still of one on one side of the street and the actual explosion in video on the other side of the street, literally within seconds of each other by the looks of things. Uh, and some, some new reports coming in now, Jonathan. This I'm, I'm going to read from the Boston Herald newspaper. Uh, the reality of what's happened here is, is sinking in and quickly. Uh, I'll, I'll quote now from some people who saw some things that nobody ever wants to see. I hope no, no one in the sound of my voice ever sees this, but it's part of this story, and I'm going to read it to you. I saw two explosions. The first one was beyond the finish line. I heard a loud bang, and I saw smoke rising. This again from the Herald reporter Chris Cassidy, who was running the marathon, quoting again. I kept running, and I heard behind me a loud bang. It looked like it was in a trash can or something. That one from Abe and Louis. And quoting again, somebody's leg flew by my head, said a spectator who gave his name to John Ross, their reporter. I gave my belt to stop the blood. People were yelling, I need my kids. It was horrific, said a man who gave his name as Brian Walker. I saw some horrific wounds. You could literally feel the rush of wind. And another quote, there are at least a dozen that seem to be injured in some way. That's from the Boston Herald reporter, Chris Cassidy. Chris McIntosh, who's the publisher of the Boston Business Journal, who was in the Lenox Hotel near the scene, said, quote, it's chaos down here. Two bombs just went off at the finish line within five seconds of each other. There must be casualties. Now I'm seeing fire trucks and ambulances. So all of this is the earliest reporting in the seconds and minutes after the explosions happened. Quoting, it was a really loud explosion, glass and smoke everywhere. We just ran. He said he found what appeared to be a shotgun pellet in his coat pocket seconds later. A shotgun pellet, which would suggest to us in the early going, and we can't know this, but if you're finding shotgun pellets, somebody has potentially rigged a device with shotgun pellets around it. So when the explosion happens, those pellets and whatever else they found were put in there to create terror. It appears from the facts before our eyes, the witnesses' statements, the video that we've seen this afternoon, that we are in the midst of some sort of terrorist attack. The president has been notified of the incident in Boston. His administration is in contact with state and local authorities. He directed his administration to provide whatever assistance is necessary in the investigation and the response. Those are likely ball bearings, not shotgun pellets, because it's ball bearings, which those who wish to do us harm have traditionally used when setting up their bombs. Terrorism is defined uh, by these pictures. Now to find out whether there are more devices, whether this incident is over, and to find the people who are responsible for forever changing the Boston Marathon and the city that houses it. It's 10 minutes before 4 o'clock in Boston, and the nation stands yet again in the face of an attack on one of our greatest cities. 
The marathon, the longest running race of its kind in this nation, where the fastest people in all the world come. And whoever did this targeted not the ones who would cross the finish line first, but those who would cross in the afternoon hours, after the Red Sox had long left the field, after the television cameras had long left the winner's position, and people who run this race in some four hours or so, who've trained in their own towns and come to Boston to show, to prove that they have excelled in this matter, and then celebrate after on Patriots Day. It is they who were targeted today with two separate explosions on two separate sides of the street, clearly timed to detonate within seconds of each other if the reporters who were on scene were right. And ball bearings went flying, and a leg went through the air, and mothers searched for their children, and a man walked by a camera and said, Did you see them? They are dead down there. And it was a picture-perfect day, as Fox 25 has been reporting it throughout the afternoon. In the hours ahead and days ahead and no doubt weeks and months and years ahead, we will learn a lot. We're not going to do a lot of guessing about what's happened here. It's not a guess that somebody set two separate explosions. That doesn't happen. That's a fact.